This video is a continuation of our drop crotch pant tutorial. So if you're looking to learn how to make this entire pant, then you should watch that tutorial linked in the description below. But if you just want to learn how to add an encased elastic waistband, then you're in the right place. An encased elastic waistband has your elastic piece and then a fabric casing that's a lot wider and gets gathered by the elastic. So first we need to increase the waist of our pant. I'm using edit pattern and holding control to drag my pant out at the top waist a half an inch or 1.3 centimeters. So you need to hold control and then tap your right click while you're dragging in order to enter in the measurement. Then I switch to my edit curve point tool and I'm gonna select all of these curve points at the hip and just delete most of them. You'll see that any segment points that you have will sort of anchor the line in that spot. And if they intersect with your internal lines, you're gonna find that you need to use your arrow keys to move them out of the way, or you're gonna have to drag your internal line out of the way in order to select them and delete or convert it to a curve point. When you delete segment points, it just creates a straight line between the segment points on either side, so it removes any curve points. So if that creates an issue for you, then you'll wanna convert the segment point to a curve point by right-clicking on it and then you can delete whichever curve points you don't need. In essence, this is gonna become quite a straight out seam, and it's not super important the exact shape. We'll true it up so that the front and back match, but beyond that, the shape is just gonna be a very subtle curve. I like to remove most segment points where I don't need them, but here I'm leaving one at the hip line so that I can make sure my pant matches from the hip up and the hip down. I kind of use them like notches. So if you have balance lines like mine and you've extended out your hip, you can select the endpoints of those lines and right click and extend or trim to the pattern outline just to make sure that they hit the pattern edge so that you can continue to use them. If you have any waist starts, you can just delete them by selecting the point and hitting delete on your keyboard. And then you wanna select the end points and convert them to curve points so that it doesn't distort your waistline. So then you can switch to your edit curve point tool and delete those to keep the waist shape smooth. If you delete the dart end points, then it's just gonna make a straight line at your waist. If you grab your edit sewing tool and you look where your dart was, you may find that you have some sewing at the top that came from your dart. So if you're in an older version of Clo, you need to select that and delete it. In the latest version, this doesn't happen anymore. Because I only had a dart at the back and I removed it and added that excess to the back waist, I've measured my front waist and compared and I've decided to drag out my front waist a little bit more and I'm actually doing it visually until it's kind of straight in line with my hip. It seems inaccurate, but with an encased elastic waistband, it's really just about how much excess you have in comparison to the elastic and how much gathering you want. It's not so much about exact numbers, but the comparison between your new waist and your fitted waistband. So I do end up with more gathering at the back of this pant because of my dart. If you wanted it to be even all the way around, you should just increase the front waist the same amount that you increase the back. Now I'm gonna true up my out seams. I like to use my edit sewing tool first to check the discrepancy between the seams. It's a quick way to show you the measurement of both seams and then hovering on your cursor, it'll tell you the difference between them. If it's less than a millimeter or less than a 16th of an inch, I often don't worry about it. But anything greater than that, I do wanna fix. You don't wanna mess with your hems. Those should remain at the same level for inseam and outseam. So I'm gonna start by looking at the hip area at the top. And where I draw these balance lines is somewhat up to me. So I'm going to actually move the balance line at the back so that those points match from back to front. So I'm gonna use my edit pattern tool and right click on the line and choose change length. And I'm gonna enter in the length of the front. And then I'm gonna choose end so that that little arrow is in the right place to change the point and move it to match the front. Then I just delete that balance line and I'm gonna redraw it with my internal polygon and extend it to the pattern outline. Now my out seams match from the hip below and I'm gonna worry about the part above the hip. So I can see that my front length is a bit longer but I can also see that it's peaking up there. So I wanna take all of it off of the front 
Normally I would split the difference, but if it makes sense to remove it all from one side, then you can do that. I'll do the same thing as before with edit pattern, right click on the line and choose change length, enter in the length of the back, and just make sure the drop down menu has the arrow at the top. Otherwise you'll just wanna choose end instead of start. So now my out seams match entirely. But what I found when I simulated is I can see that there's this bubbling at the top of the pant that tells me my out seam is too long and it also makes the hemline hang at sort of an angle. You can see if you pick it up a little bit, then that all straightens out and looks better. So what I wanna do is actually decrease the length of the out seam at the top, but it doesn't change what I just did because I need my out seams to match either way. So I'm gonna go back to my edit pattern tool and select these points, hold control and drag down along my out seam. I can see that the waistline didn't move where this pocket marking is, which tells me I have a segment point underneath that internal line. So I wanna remove that. So I'm gonna move my internal line out of the way a little bit, and then I'm gonna convert that segment point to a curve point. Then what I see though is that my entire waistline moves down all at once. So remember I said when you have a segment point, it acts as kind of an anchor. So what I'm gonna do is grab my add point split line tool and place a segment point somewhere around the middle of my waist because I really don't wanna alter the shape of the waist at the front end, but only towards the second half of it. So now I'm gonna hold control and click and drag down and tap my right click and enter in 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter because I wanna make sure I can do it the exact same amount on the back out seam. Then I'm gonna convert that segment point to a curve point and delete it with my edit curve point tool so that it smooths out the waistline again. With the back, I'm not gonna use an anchor point I'm just gonna drag it down and then I'm actually gonna use that internal line as a reference to see where the waistline was before. And then I can move my curve points to make sure that I don't shave too much off at the back. I still feel like my out seam is kind of hanging down and making my hem angle. And I just wanna pick it up a tiny bit more so I ended up shortening the out seam another quarter of an inch. You'll see this time around I did add an anchor point at the back waist, but at the front I just fixed my curve points after the fact. So remember you have a little bit of leeway because this is an elastic waist and we have the extra room. And these are really all just kind of specific to your garment. So if you use the Ides trouser block, you may find that you have the same issues. If not, these are just examples to show you how I make these pattern fixes as I go, but you might have a different set of issues. In order to create our elastic, we need to measure the avatar where the waist sits. So I'm gonna grab my edit measure tool in the 3D window. I'm just gonna delete my existing waistband. And here I have a marking that I can measure about where the top of the pants sits. If you don't know how to create these markings, there's a link in the description below to another video of ours that will show you. My avatar's waist measures just over 31 and a quarter inches, but elastic is usually just a little bit undercut because it stretches out. Using my rectangle tool, I'm gonna make a rectangle 31 inches wide, and then the height that I want my elastic, which is gonna be one inch or 2.5 centimeters. You always wanna be sure to set patterns this size or smaller to five millimeter particle distance. I should clarify that this waistband is grown on, meaning that the outer portion of the elastic casing is actually the pant itself. But you could do this with just a second rectangle that's longer than your elastic length. Either way in Clo, when you do an encased elastic waistband, there's no inner layer of self fabric. It's just the outer layer of self that's larger and then the elastic pattern. With edit pattern, I'm gonna select my front and back waist holding shift right click and choose offset as internal line. I'm gonna offset a line at the height of my elastic and choose extend so that it goes to the pattern edges. Using segment sewing, I'm gonna sew the top and bottom of my elastic to the top waist of my pant and the internal line. So the way this works is you need to sew the elastic first and then you hold shift and you're gonna go across your pant patterns in order, making sure that that ticking mark is at the same end on all of the patterns. So I'm putting the seam of my elastic at the center back. It doesn't matter where you put it, but you need to go in order as though you are sewing it in real life. 
After sewing, you can right click on your waistband in 3D and choose superimpose under. This is automatically going to put it inside where it's sewn. And you'll notice if you look at textured surface, that the back side of the elastic is facing in. This is just a trick in Clo that you always want to follow. The back side of the fabrics should always be facing in towards the avatar. It helps with collision issues and superimpose will automatically do that. So in order for this elastic waistband to actually act as elastic, we need to select the top and bottom edge using edit pattern and check elastic on in the property editor and set it to a ratio of 100. This is basically a way to create elastic with whatever fabric you're using when you don't have a digitized elastic fabric. Don't forget to sew the sides of your elastic to each other. I usually leave this after I've superimposed. One trick before simulating with elastic waistbands is you can select the avatar and you can increase the kinetic friction in the property editor, which just makes the avatar less slippery since sometimes elastic waistbands being tighter will slide up to the small of the waist. With gathering, you can't see the detail when you're in a high particle distance. And because this is a grown on waistband, I don't wanna change the particle distance on my entire pant while I'm working. So I can select the top edge of my waist and in the property editor, I can check shuring on. I'll set the height to the height of my waistband and leave the interval at the default, which is the smallest you can go. What this does is it creates a really tiny particle distance only at that edge. So it'll allow me to see whether or not I have enough gathering and kind of what it's gonna look like while I'm working so that I don't have to put the whole pant in high res in the middle of my process. This may or may not give you enough information, and if you need to, you should put the garment in high res using the high res garment button. This is always the best way to assess fit and if you feel like you made your pattern correctly.